All right, guys, we're going to be doing another quick video. This will probably be actually a little bit longer. We're going to show you how to input a listing in the MLS and the steps you're going to need to take. There are going to be other parts of this video that are going to be separate from this video. So you can look at how to uh, set up showings, how to give directions and stuff like that. But this video is going to be the whole piece of it if you want to see it from start to finish. Okay, so you're going to go into your MLS, <coughs> excuse me, and you're going to go to listings and you're going to push, uh, you're going to add a residential listing. Once you go into the residential listing, it's going to pop up all these required things. What I'm going to do today is put in the required um, details and we'll touch on the other items that necessarily aren't required, but might be important that the agent might want you to, or you might want to add to your listing. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to start by leaving the status blank. We'll never put that as a status until we actually want it to go live. So the property subtype is going to be a detached for this actual property. The property that I'm working on, if we'll go to the Douglas County Assessor's website, which we'll use quite a bit um, for this, is going to be, here's the property we're going to be putting in. And that address is 1527 North 132nd Avenue Circle. So we'll go ahead and put all that in. This is for if it's a villa, townhome, or condo. You will know that by a townhome is usually attached or a villa is typically there's association dues that are associated with the property. If there are association dues, that's gonna show up here um, under general assessment fees. Usually if there's an assessment fee, a large monthly fee, typically over $100 a month, it is going to be a villa, um, but you'll just want to check on the, uh, the assessor's website. It should also specify there. The listing agent I already have there. Listing office is already set there. And then now we're going to put in the address. Parcel number, you'll be able to pull that on the assessor's website. Parcel number's right there. Now area, area is gonna is a little tricky from time to time. Um, the easiest way to find out what area this home is in is to see if the home was listed prior. So we're gonna see if this home was listed once before by doing a quick search. And it has been listed and sold a couple times, so all you have to do is open one of them, verify with the picture that it is the property, and then pull up the actual area, the subdivision. You can pull most of the information that you'll always need is gonna be on this document. Everything that we are going to be uploading or putting in the new listing agreement is also going to be here in this old listing. Um, if you don't have this, that's where we're going to be using and relying on the assessor's website and or other properties in the neighborhood. So if this property has never been sold before, the first thing we would do is look for a home on that street that has sold previously. And then there we can pull that up on the MLS and see that uh, the sub area is 2333. So that means the area is 233. And then the sub is usually either one, two, three, or four added on to that two, three, three number. Okay. So if we go back to the listing, the area is two, three, three. And then the sub area, if we pull up this search, it'll pull up two, three, three, one, two, three, and four. And this was three. So we'll save that. The subdivision we saw was Linden Park. Make sure we spelt that right. 
because if you misspell that um, Linden Park, if you misspell it, it won't pull up if somebody's looking for that specific neighborhood. Um, what you can also do is you could also put different spellings of that neighborhood if agents are human, so they're going to make mistakes. So if they have incorrect spelling, you might put in different types of spelling to also include to make sure that you're getting all of the home, everybody's able to pull it up. Um, if this is an SID, again, we're just going to go right back to this property to see if it's an SID. Listing price, listing date is today, <coughs> expiration date. All of this is self-explanatory, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and as I'm going through, if there's something that I want to make a note on, I'll make sure I communicate that to you guys here, okay? Now for block, block is uh, tricky. Um, if you don't have a copy like I have here, the block direction is north. I look for an address that's on the same side of the street, in the same neighborhood, on that street, in the MLS, and then I'll pull it from there. That's the best way and quickest, honestly, the quickest way to find that information. This assessment is an annual assessment, so there is an assessment, but it's $350. In nice neighborhoods, they're always usually, so it will be specified here that it's paid annually. Uh, going back up to that first one, villas, uh, what kind of house was it detached? Or was it a condo, town, home, or villa? This would typically be monthly, okay? Um, I'm going to put some directions to the property here. Okay, for the legal description, the legal description is going to be here in the assessor's website. You can simply copy that over, or it is also on uh, the previous listing. You'll be able to simply put that off here. Plot dimensions. Admit. Okay, above grade, bedrooms above grade. This means that the bedroom is above the ground. So if there is a bedroom in the basement, it would not be included in the above ground section. It would be under bedrooms and it would show above grade bedroom, bedrooms uh, for those. If there is a bedroom in the basement for it to be qualified as a bedroom, it has to have an egress window. An egress window, I don't know the exact height, so don't quote, it's either 36 or 48 inches from the ground and it needs to be large enough that it, an adult can climb out of the window in case of a fire. If, if it's one of those small windows that are up high, that usually six feet high, five feet high, that doesn't qualify and you can't call that a bedroom. Okay, for the square footage, if you do not have access to another document like I'm using right now, you're going to get that from the MLS, and, or excuse me, from the assessor's website. And even if it was on the MLS, you're going to want to verify because some MLS square footages are going to be different than those on the assessor's website. This is important for you to know because if there's differences, you need to find out why there's a difference or if it's a big deal or not. Um, typically, agents will put in a different number or they'll measure the house themselves manually and it comes out different than the assessor's website. 
Um, so that's when you're going to want to put all measures are approximate, AMA, if you're actually measuring it yourself. And it's probably safe to always put AMA for uh, all measurements are approximate, even if you pull the measurements from the assessor's website when it comes to bedroom sizes, size of the upstairs, the main level, or the basement. Those are going to be important for you to look at. So here, the first floor, there's 1530 square feet, and that's what we're going to use. 1531. The second floor was 1680. Tax amount. Again, you can always get that from the assessor's website if you don't have that here. And I'm going to get that from the assessor's website because this is taxes based on 2010. Go to the assessor's website and you'll see treasury tax report you click on that link and it will take you to a new page and it will tell you what the taxes are for that property so this is 8012 taxes have been paid in full already this year taxes are in april and august i believe so you want to make if it's after august or September you're going to just put full and you can also look on here to see if they've been paid so right now it says principal interest advertising total is and they've been paid here it looks like this is not a new construction so it's not new and not a model This is over a quarter of an acre, but less than a half acre. And that's pretty small for this neighborhood. Basement, there is a basement. Percentage, you don't have to put that, but we're gonna put 100% because it's the whole basement. If it's a split level house, a split level house only has half of the basement is actually um, usable. The other half is actually the garage, so here you'd only put up 50%. This is not a walkout, and then you're gonna put the school districts that these homes are in. This is Ezra, Kiewit, and Miller. Okay, if you can't find the school district, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna actually have to go to a couple different websites and actually pull it. Probably one of the easiest ones to do is to start with Zillow and go from there. So I'm gonna go and grab that information and I will be right back. Okay, found it. School district is actually Millard. Omaha and Millard are the same, but you can specify the school district to be Millard and all of the school districts actually pulled up there. This is a two-story house. Um, agreement type, you should always put exclusive agency or exclusive right to sell. Exclusive right to sell basically means that you're the only one selling the property and no other agents are allowed to actually list the property with you, you are the only one. And then under here is what you're going to be paying out the agent if they bring a buyer. It will always be, unless told otherwise, 2.4%. Equity, agent has equity if you have a family member that owns the house or if you have any interest financially in the house, you own it yourself. Okay, now we're going to get into the room sizes and dimensions. Um, I, it's not required to put in here. It's helpful for people that want to see what the house, how big the house is or if, uh, if it's important to them. So it's important to do that. This is a vacant house in particular for me, and um, it is not as important, so I'm gonna leave them blank and move on. But you do have one required on where the master, master bedroom is, and it's on the second floor. And then the laundry room. And this laundry room was in the basement. 
No, main floor, excuse me. Behind the kitchen. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute and explain how bathrooms sizes work, and we'll probably do another video for a short version of it. But bathrooms work in this way. If it has a stool and a sink, it's called a half bath. If it has a stool, a sink, and a shower, it's called a three-quarter bath. If it has a stool, a sink, and a bathtub, it's called a full bath. Or a tub, a tub. if there's a tub in there, it's called a full bath. And so you can specify when you're adding, it can be confusing from time to time how many bathrooms does a place have and you get different numbers. So when you're doing the addition, most people will add a half bath and a three quarter bath. Well, that's only 1.25 bath, right? Um, but then there's another spot they're going to ask how many actual bathrooms are there. Well, you would say two, even though it only added up to one and a quarter, you have two actual locations. So you're going to want to just make sure you understand that. And when you're looking on the different sites, because some sellers will complain that the bathroom information is incorrect, and you're going to want to make sure you explain how that works and that either it was incorrect or it educate them on why it's correct okay so for this property on the main floor they had a half bath so there's one half bath on the main floor on the second floor they had a full bath they had two full baths on the second floor so you would want to put that and so this would tell us that there's actually two and a half baths but there's actually three locations here, we're gonna not talk about public remarks. This is where you're just gonna write a description on the property. Um, whatever you wanna say, my suggestion is look at similar properties, take some of their language and use that in your description. We also have a service called Copycat you can get access to, and it will give you adjectives and verbs and language that you commonly probably don't use in your vocabulary that will help you write a more engaging uh, public remarks post. For agent remarks, if there's anything specific that you want the agents to know, that's where you're going to put that here. And what I have there is calling centralized showing because I have a showing service so I don't have to receive all the calls. I tell them where I want the contract to be sent and then I encourage buyers to uh, have the title company to be RTS title and escrow but it's not required it's just encouraged. Um, I hardly ever put anything for office remarks. depending on how nice the property is. This property is not very nice, so we're not going to put that much detail in it because we don't need to. It's gonna be an investor. An investor is gonna look at the numbers and see if the numbers make sense for what they wanna do and they're gonna move on. There's some requirements here and that is the AC and the cooling. So you gotta put the type of cooling that is. Most homes are gonna be central air, okay? For the AC unit, you have a window AC, you have a heat pump. Most likely, a seller will know if it's a heat pump. If you ask them if it's a heat pump and they say, I don't know, it's probably not a heat pump. A heat pump is something that costs a lot of money and they're probably really proud of that they actually put it in the property because it saves on their utilities. So if they don't specify that, then it's probably central air. <clears throat> There is a fence on this property, and it's a full fence. There's different sizes. You have full, wood, chain link, privacy. You just put the ones that are applicable to towards you. Attached garage. Uh, type of heating for the fuel. Usually for a furnace, it's gas. Um, it could be electric, so you just want to specify. Usually an electric furnace isn't, the whole property is electric and there is no gas whatsoever on the property. 
and that's usually the times but don't quote me on that you're just going to want to make sure you ask them if it's gas or gas furnace and you'll know if you look at the gas if you look at the furnace you'll see uh burners that blow air if you take off the cover of the furnace you'll be able to see the blowers and the actual flames that blow into the furnace you'll be able to see that and we call that actually forced air so it's the it's forced air being forced into the house through those burners and that's why it's called a forced air furnace ownership type usually is um, a fee simple now the title company will do a back a title search on the property when it's sold and they'll verify if there's liens on the property um, but the homeowner usually if it's a standard purchase it's going to be a fee simple there are a couple other options and the way you can look at that is if usually the other one which is not on here is a quick claim deed and um, all of these are to be honest I've never used any of these other ones so it's gonna be a rare occasion that you'll come across that but just be aware of that water is public because we're in uh, the city limits and then the sewer is public as well or uh, public water so you have a public sewer and public water here's the type of financing that you're gonna want to select typically you'll stay away up from private financing unless the seller is willing to flip the bill on that we're not going to go into exactly what that means you're welcome to google it va fha conventional we're not going to do a loan assumption usually loan assumptions aren't um, you aren't able to do a loan, loan assumptions anymore um, but you could if you have a really really low interest rate and somebody wants to keep that then you have cash and those are the ones I typically leave it at. Showing instructions, this is where you'll pick based on if you are doing that or if you have a showing service. I simply select call a showing service. Okay, now that is everything for this for this purchase or listing agreement. All this is if it actually sells. Once we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to save this listing as a partial listing always 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 save it as a partial listing when you initially go to save it um, the reason for that is we're going to actually send this information to the seller to verify that everything's correct so I'm saving it as a partial listing right now because I haven't put the pictures in once you save it as a partial listing, you can go under and select an action right here, and you can put pictures in, which are gonna be right here. I'm still waiting for my pictures. Let's actually see if they came in. No pictures yet. So we're still waiting on that, but you'll simply select upload multiple photos, and you'll be able to upload all of them at one time instead of uploading them individually. Once you do that, you're also able to actually drag and drop and move the pictures in the order that you want, which I highly recommend. So it actually, the flow of the pictures makes sense. If you start with the front and then go straight to the basement, that's kind of weird. And it's probably gonna throw people off. People are interested in looking at the kitchen, the living room, the master bedroom, the master bath. So those are kind of towards the front. The way I go about doing it is I start as I'm walking into the property. So I start from the front door, I flow into the kitchen, I flow into the living room, and then I get all the bedrooms after that in a row. And then after I do all the main floor and the second floor, I go into the basement. After I get pictures of the basement in order, then I also will go into the backyard and end with the backyard as the last pictures on that so we'll close that and that is all we have for right now guys that is how you're going to put a listing in there'll be other short videos on setting up the specifics that you'll need um, but if you have any questions please let us know in the comments below and thanks guys take care